Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be hooking up in an alien environment. I've got a good email here from a viewer who actually lives in Saudi Arabia, which if you know anything about Saudi Arabia, it's a pretty conservative Muslim country. But before we get into this guy's email, I got a quote that I wrote I'd like to share with you. And it says, masculine energy is about fearlessly taking risks, being dangerous, and going for what you want in life without concern for the consequences. Men who take risks and risk reje rejection publicly will set themselves apart from timid and shy men, have no competition, or have to worry about losing a woman to another man. The superior man always goes for what he wants even though he may experience setbacks, failure, and rejection. Women who reject superior men will respect them for at least showing up and being a man, which is more than the average guy is willing to do. And also why the average guy doesn't get much respect or attention from women. So let's go ahead and jump right into this guy's email. <clears throat> he says, hey Corey, I'm an avid follower of your work and it's no exaggeration to say it has changed my life. I thought you would be interested in a field report on how effectively your principles work in the toughest city in the world for meeting women. Rida, Saudi Arabia. If they work here, and of course they do, they will work anywhere. Rida is governed by strict Muslim Sharia law, which makes dating a risky business. It is actually against the law for an unmarried man and woman to go out in public together. Holding hands in public, much less kissing, even between a husband and wife, is banned. Sounds like just a delightful place to live. It's like, God... He says, if the religious police catch you out on a date with a woman who is not your wife, they can take you both to a police station for punishment. In practice, we Western expats, I'm from Washington, D.C. here on a three-year assignment, have learned the loopholes of how to get around the mutawa, which is the religious police. I don't know if I said that right. He says, and that points up to an important Corey Wayne principle from a recent video. A man must do or a man does what he must, no matter the personal consequences. It was actually a John Jeff K quote. He says, a man does what he must, despite the consequences. He says, the first difference between being a catch here or being a friend zone also ran is being willing to take the risk smartly to have a fun experience with your girl despite the ever-present threat of getting caught. The women I have gone out with imply they find it a huge turn on that I am not daunted and at the same time smart enough to know the places and ways to have fun without getting busted. Remember, women want the guy to be the leader. A great book that you should read if you haven't already. It's, uh, it's a book by John Eldridge. It's called Wild at Heart. He's written a bunch of them, but that's a really great one. I think it's probably seven, eight years ago that he wrote it, but it's a fantastic book and it talks about how boys, when they're young, they're climbing trees, they're making like the biggest jump ramps to jump with their bike and taking all kinds of crazy risks. And it's like, as we get into our, our, our 20s, we tend to not take those kinds of risks. We tend to become timid and shy and live within our comfort zone. And it's a really great book for guys to read. And a lot of women read it as well. It's fantastic. And I highly recommend it. He says, we go out to restaurants or golf or on desert hikes, or we sneak into each other's compounds. He says, Westerners here live in walled compounds where the Muslim rules don't apply. It seems to add an air of danger and shared intimacy they find arousing. It's, I mean, it's just total embodiment of what a man is all about. It's like, think about all the mystery novels that women read. It's that same kind of vibe. It's the same kind of energy that they get to. It's like dating a spy almost. He says, in Saudi Arabia, women are required in public to wear head-to-toe black robes called ab ab abayas. Ab I, I don't know if I said that right. He says, that conceal their figures and looks. Well, I know it's like some of those countries, it's, I mean, it's like 100 degrees. You imagine walking around and it's like a freaking dark tent. I mean, because our dark color attracts a lot more heat when you're in the sun. It's like, God, it must be just incredibly hot. I really feel for the women that, that wear these things. And he says, most women wear veils and headscarves too, although most Western expats don't. 
I don't approach Saudi women or Muslim women in general, not that they aren't attractive, at least as far as I can see when they take off their veils at a restaurant, but because my preferred dates are from the US, UK, or Western Europe. He says the next two Corey Wayne principles that are essential are knowing where to go and being friendly to everyone. He says I hang out at British, Australian, French, German, and United States embassy events, but of course, so do hundreds of other guys who want to meet single nurses, teachers, and embassy chicks. Because I am a Corey Wayne three percenter on my ninth time through your book, by the way, I have no competition. How many times have I said in my videos, just apply what I teach and you will see that the shit works for you. You can think I'm a total jerk off, not believe anything I say, just apply it, it will work for you. Every other guy out there is making you buy hundreds of dollars worth of ebooks and DVDs and all this shit and I'm putting my best stuff out there. You can even read my book for free if you want to on my website if you don't want to risk the 10 bucks that it costs for the Amazon Kindle version. I mean, I just want to help people, and I love reading stories like this of people that, because he'll tell you at the end where he was originally and where he is now. But it's like I love seeing that. I love seeing other people be happy because of something that I've done to make their lives better. Because not only does does what I do improve his life, but everybody's life he interacts with, including the women, they're having a great fucking time with them. Who wouldn't want to do that for a living? I mean, it's fucking awesome. It's an honor to be able to do this kind of stuff. He says, merely by approaching and starting a non-fake casual, casual conversation about anything or nothing with the best looking females in the room, I have found most women are delighted since guys they know display beta male non-confidence, usually in the form of fake overconfidence in that setting. Yeah, they're trying to, trying to usually use some kind of external thing, what they do, their reputation, the kind of car they drive, where they live how they spend money, the clothes they dress, to make up for the fact that they don't feel like they've got it on the inside. And you see that a lot in movies. The guys are always doing some kind of external thing to get the woman's attention, when in reality, you have everything you need. It's already within you. Attraction's not a choice. Some women are gonna like you, and some aren't. That's just the way it is. Are you in or you out, honey? That's all you basically are looking to find out when you start interacting with a woman. And if you're in, all you got to do is not talk them out of it. And my book tells you everything, the most common mistakes that guys do that turn women off. He says, true, a lot of them are from Pakistan, India, or non-Saudi Middle Eastern countries, and they just don't have a clue. He said, but the Aussies, Brits, Swedes, Kiwis, French, Dutch, Germans, and sadly, my fellow American dudes are equally clueless and half the time drunk, so there really is no competition. That's the whole reason why my book is 3% man. I mean, think about it. Any field, 3% of the guys are basically making all the money and having all the success. These are the subtle differences that make the difference. It's having knowledge that most guys don't have. He says, because I have been practicing Corey Wayne principle number four, talk to everyone everywhere, and five, talk to gorgeous women the same way as I talk to everyone else. In other words, he's not putting them on a pedestal. He's just treating them like a normal human being that that gets bad breath, whose farts stink. And, I mean, people are people. He says, I soon found myself going out with a striking English woman who was bored with the men she knows and just dying to get to know someone new. The story below illustrates the point. When approached, these embassy girls test right off the bat. But because of your training, I'm ready for it. One pair of women I met early after arrival at a British party told me they were lesbians and waited to see my reaction. It's like women bluff to test your strength. I, I actually did a video called that, women bluff to test your strength. Just to see what you're made of, just to see how you handle it. Especially when you come up and you're confident to talk because the average guy just totally fucking wilts when they test them. He says, so I said that, they, that the gay lifestyle is just fine and I am proud to be from a country that accepts alternative lifestyles, but as a matter of fact, most gay women I know don't like guys only because they haven't met me yet. He says a true lesbian couple would have rolled their eyes at that answer, but because these two were just playing with me, they laughed and gave themselves away. He says then later, when one of the two was a little drunker, she introduced me to her husband, 
which was some guy she had pulled from the crowd and accused me of hitting on her to him. And I said, pleased to meet you. If you're her husband, you probably know what this lady's birthday is, right? What is it? And he says, of course he didn't know. And her friends thought it was hilarious the way I'd seen through her. It's Because when you really get good at this stuff, you can see when they're fucking with you. You can see it in their body language and their physiology, the little smirk that they get on their face. It's adorable. I love it. He says, I ended up getting... And the cool thing about it, it's like, it's like a secret language that you and them can speak that everybody else watching is kind of gone. You know, it's like they don't get it. He says, I ended up giving a ride to the best looking one in the group who had watched the whole scene after we settled down in a quiet corner to get to know each other better. Because it's like he's interacting with these two particular women and then another one's observing this. He automatically has social proof just because of what she observed. So because he's in with these girls, she automatically, the one observing this is, huh, maybe I need to get to know that guy. That's why it's so important to be friendly to everyone everywhere you go. And even when people bust your balls, you got to give it right back in a fun, playful way. It's not about being a dick, but it's about being fun and playful and charming. He says, on our third date, my new English friend asked if I would take her to Dubai with me since she had never been. I booked us into a resort and we basically did the horizontal tango for most of a long weekend with side trips to see the swimming pool, Dubai Mall, and the Burji Col- – I can't – it's that bit, the tallest building in the world, at least for right now it is. That was the one that was in the last Mission Impossible movie. He says, the world's tallest building. He says, by the way, Dubai is unbelievable and well worth the trip over here. It doesn't hurt that gas is 60 cents a gallon either. He says, right now it's Ramadan and most people are gone for the month. When everyone comes back in September, you'll find me at yoga class in my compound at Sirak dancing. I have no idea what that is. At the embassies and out with female friends dodging the mutawa, which is the religious police. He says, none of this would be, tr- would be true without your online videos and especially your book. I am happily hitting the PayPal button on your website because without you, my life would be a long, lonely assignment over here. He says, instead of meeting some of the sexiest, most adventuresome women in the world in a place where it's actually illegal to do so. All the best from Rida, Saudi Arabia. I think that's awesome, dude. Thanks for sharing. And by the way, thanks for the very generous donation that you made. And any of you watching this, if you want to make a donation, you appreciate the value that I offer, on my website in the right-hand column, there is a donate button. And you can donate any amount that you would like. And if you haven't got the Kindle version of my book, underneath the email sign-up box, there is a link that will take you right to the Amazon Kindle download page. Once you get there, if you don't have to have a Kindle device, just download one of their free e-reader apps for whatever electronic device that you'd like to read my book on. And I will talk to you soon.